Today we're going to take a look at this, my GoPro Hero 9 vlogging setup. First of all, why do I need all these things when I can just mount the GoPro itself on a tripod and basically call it a day? Well, there are a couple of reasons. Reason number one is because I want to have better audio quality and for that I need an external microphone and also the GoPro microphone adapter. The second reason is because I want to be able to mount accessories such as the microphone or an external light to vlog in low light conditions. And for that, I need the accessories, obviously, and also the vlog cage to mount the accessories on the GoPro. And the last reason is because it's nice to have an extra layer of protection by having this vlog cage to protect the GoPro from scratches, from scoffs and so on, because you know when you vlog, you basically throw around the camera and stuff and get scratched really fast. And it's nice to have an extra layer of protection to protect the GoPro from all these kinds of things. Let me show you now exactly what I have in here, what kind of accessories and so on. All right, so first of all, let's start with the case that I'm using. I'm using the Ulanzi G94 plastic vlogging case at the moment. And with this case, I'm able to mount uh, the GoPro microphone adapter for good external audio quality. One, two culture mounts to mount external accessories such as microphones and lights and so on. And also, as you can see, I'm able to put a filter on the GoPro with the case on without any issues. Sometimes I use this case. This is the Ulanzi G95 metal vlog case. It's basically the same thing as the plastic one, but the metal one is just a little bit more durable and it's protecting the GoPro a little bit better. The next accessory is this vlogging tripod from Ulanzi. It's basically a GoPro Shorty clone has a nice grip to it, very comfortable to hold. I can also extend the tripod if I want to, just like so. And if I want to, I can unfold the legs and put it on the table. Let me show you briefly how it works in real life vlogging scenarios. Okay, so right now I'm filming with the GoPro Hero 9 Black and the tripod is at its default position, so not fully extended. I'm also filming in 4K linear field of view. And as you can see, it's pretty wide enough uh, for vlogging. But if I want to, I can extend my tripod just like so. And now I'm gonna have a wider field of view, but I'm holding the tripod basically in the same position. Again, this is how it looks when it's completely folded, closed. And this is how it looks when it's completely extended. And one more thing that I can do with the tripod is, for example, if I am vlogging and I want to stop for a second and put my tripod somewhere, I can simply unfold the legs put it on a table or something like that, but it has to be an even place because if it's not gonna be even, the tripod is gonna fall. And I can also adjust the tripod uh, height if I want to and basically continue vlogging. The next thing that I sometimes use is this ND filters from Freewell. It's not really necessary, but if you want to make your footage a little bit more cinematic, so to speak, you can start using ND filters to have the most natural motion blur effect. Let me show you how it looks uh, with ND filters and then without ND filters and you'll decide for yourself if you should use one or not. Okay, so right now I am not using any ND filters on my GoPro. The shutter speed is set to automatic and ISO is set to 800 maximum and 100 minimum. And this is the kind of motion blur that you get with the shutter speed set to automatic basically. Okay, and now I'm gonna put an ND filter and let's see if there is a dramatic difference or not. Okay, so right now I'm using an ND filter with a GoPro and let's see if there is any difference in the motion blur uh, with the ND filter. So I'm gonna move my hand and by looking at the front facing screen, I can definitely see a difference. Obviously there will be a difference because an ND filter basically allows me to have the most natural amount of motion blur in my picture, but in my personal opinion, it's not really necessary when you vlog with a GoPro. It's going to make your vlogs a little bit more cinematic, but it's not really essential. And also, it's going to decrease the quality of the stabilization a little bit. I've noticed that when you're not using an ND filter with a GoPro, uh, the stabilization is amazing. But when you do use an ND filter with a GoPro, or when you 
lock the shutter speed, the stabilization works a little bit less good. All right, the next one is the overpriced uh, GoPro microphone adapter, which costs about 50 US dollars. But if you want to plug in an external microphone to your GoPro, you have to use this thing or you can buy the media mode. It's overpriced, it's annoying, it's big, but if you want good audio, you don't have any other choice. Okay, now let's talk about microphones. Sometimes I use this microphone. This is the Rode Video Micro Shotgun Microphone. It has amazing audio quality, but it's a little bit bulky. It's pretty much the same size as the GoPro vlogging setup itself. And for the most part, I am using this microphone, my beloved uh, Erotage ETM-001 uh, mini microphone. As you can see, it's very compact and small. I love this microphone. The only downside to this microphone is that it's a little bit too sensitive. So if you're gonna vlog in uh, noisy conditions, it's gonna pick up a lot of noise from different parts because it's really, really sensitive and you have to lower down the volume in post-production a little bit because it is super sensitive. Let me actually show you the audio quality difference between the Rode Video Micro and the Aero TGTM001, so you'll see which one can be better for you. Okay, so right now I'm using the Rode Video Micro, shotgun microphone. I think this should sound the best for vlogging. It should also reject noise from behind it really well. Right now I'm located in a really busy area. As you can see behind me, lots of traffic, lots of cars. But generally it's supposed to focus only on my voice because I'm in front of the microphone. Testing, testing, one, two, three, one, two, three, testing, testing. Happy New Year, everybody, by the way. Look at this beautiful Christmas tree. Okay, now let's switch to the Erotage ETM-001. All right, and right now I'm using the Erotage ETM-001 mini small microphone. And the sound should be much louder, not better, but just louder. And you should also hear everything around me much better, the traffic, the cars, and pretty much all the noises around me because this microphone does not reject anything. And that's one of the main cons about the Aerotea GTM-001 because it's just a little bit too sensitive. Again, testing, testing, one, two, three, test, one, two, three, test, testing, testing. All right, the last thing that I want to talk about is lighting. I basically never vlog in loaded conditions or at night, but if I do, I'm going to use uh, this light. This is the Ulanzi VL49 RGB light, which is not the most compact uh, light on the market. It's pretty bulky, but because I barely vlog in loaded conditions, for me, it's totally fine. This is how it looks on the GoPro vlogging setup. As you can see, it's pretty bulky. There are some other smaller options on the market if you really want to. And now let me show you the difference between vlogging at night uh, without the light and then with this light. All right, so this is how it looks like when I'm vlogging in low light conditions with the GoPro without using any lights. I'm filming in 4K, a linear field of view, and ISO is set to 1600. And as you can see, it looks pretty horrible. My face is barely lit, only if I'm gonna stand like this, it's gonna be somewhat fine, but it looks pretty horrible. Now let me turn on the light and see how much of a difference it makes. All right, so right now I'm using the external light, it's turned on, I also lowered the ISO to 800 to have a little bit less noise in the picture, and I think this looks much better uh, than before. Obviously, this is not perfect, but in a lot of cases, this is the best look that you can get, in my personal opinion, with the GoPro. And the light is only set to 10% of brightness, so I can turn it on even more. Ooh, so now the light is set to about 50% and it's really bright and it looks kind of awkward. I feel awkward because I don't really feel confident in vlogging in public places and stuff. But as you can see, it looks pretty good anyhow guys i think this is it for today this is my vlogging setup for the gopro hero 9 black i hope you find this video informative and useful and i guess i will see you in my next video thanks for watching and peace out